this challenge is great for working with multiple data sets to come together to understand more about uh, the passengers that we have on our flights and whether uh, their ordering purchases from the food trolley is anything to do with where they sit on the plane. So we've got four data sets that we need to bring together to be able to start answering those questions. So let's take a look at that. So first of all, we've just got information about the planes themselves. So we've got the row numbers and you know the different seats. They're always labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, or well, not always, it depends on the plane you're on, but uh, this is like a three and then the aisle and then another three seats, that type of airline. And you can see that at the moment we've got the seat numbers as well in each of these um, columns. So what we want to do first of all is reshape this data. So we've got all the information about those A, B, C, D, E or F in one column and then those seat numbers in another column. So that's a rows to columns pivot that we're going to do just with all of these uh, seat positions being pivoted down so that we have them now in their own field with the seat number there too. And of course the row number still sticks around too. And then we're just doing a little bit of categorization using an if calculation to say that um, if the position is A or F, it's a window seat. If it's B or E, it's a middle seat. Else, all of the seats are aisle seats. And a visual check of whether that calculation is working well is that we've got, you know, um, an equal amount of each of those seat labels, which is good because um, we wouldn't want to have, you know, more aisle seats than window seats because that wouldn't make sense for how we know our plane is laid out. So once we've got this information, we can join that onto our passenger uh, list and we can see we've got information about the passengers themselves and this passenger number uh, correlates to where they're sitting on the flight. So we can do a join there of the passenger number to the seat number and that's starting to build up our data set a little bit. We know who sat where and what they've purchased. Well, not what they've purchased, but how much they've spent. Um, so next we can bring in some information about their flight number, which will also help us to answer those questions for this challenge. So our flight details are all uh, like stuck together. We can see that we've got um, square brackets around and uh, vertical pipes separating the different fields. Now I tried an automatic split on this, um, but it wants to then split out the date um, into year, month, day columns separately, whereas I'd like to keep that all together. So I've got to be more specific to prep to tell it what I want it to do. And I want to do a custom split on the vertical pipe for all those fields. And that gives us um, a field for each of um, the inf bits of information in that one field. You can see we've still got the square brackets in there, but that's okay. We can get rid of those. We can do things like, um, say, to get rid of the square bracket in this instance, we can clean and we can remove the punctuation. Sorry, there we go. Remove punctuation. That's the option there. And that gets rid of the square bracket. And then we can make that into a numeric data type. We can change these data roles to be airports so that we're certain that everything's kind of spelt right and there's nothing... Um, in our data that shouldn't be there. We can do that for the arrival airport too. And then we can change our date to be a date and our time to be a time. And that's kind of what we're doing in this next clean step. But you can see how I've um, sort of stuck the date and time together. The calculation in order to do that once we've changed our data types to um, date and date time for departure date and departure time respectively, we can then use the make date time function there. Um, to go ahead and turn that into one field rather than having two separate fields. And then we're left with that nice information about our flight details that we can then go ahead and join on to that data set that we've got going on. But one more thing, sorry, I did just miss out this step. Um, we also want to classify whether it's an afternoon, evening or morning flight. And that's another kind of if else if logic calculation um, using the date part hour function to uh, determine whether it's morning, afternoon or evening. So we're building up this challenge nicely now. 
we have one more data set that we want to bring in and that's details of our plane so where is business class in the plane so we've got our flight number and these are the rows which are business class so we join that on and then the way that i decided to classify whether it was business or economy um, was to remove from that field that we have there where it's got business class it was one to ten for example i thought hey why do we need the one two like the one dash in our field we can just replace that with nothing and make that a numeric field which is what i've done here as well um, and then we can just write a nice calculation where it's saying hey if our row is less than or equal to the business class field that we have there then it's business otherwise it's economy and then we have that extra uh, field there to be able to classify our data set now we can start answering those questions that Tom gave us so for the first two questions we need to exclude business class so we add in a clean step and we just click on business if that was business and click exclude um, so that we can start totaling things up because the purchases are free for business customers so we don't want that to affect our um, sums we don't want to count them we just want to count it for economy because that's where we're actually making the money so what we want is the average for um, each time of day in the end the average purchase for each flight for each time of day so first of all i'm aggregating the data set based on the flight time and the flight id and summing up the purchase amount before just having the flight time and averaging the purchase amount and that gives us our first output once we do a little bit of tidying up and ranking so the tidying up is just using the round function to round it to two decimal places and then we're ranking by clicking on that field and going to create and calculate a field and rank and that's similar across all of our outputs for this uh, challenge the next question that we're answering is we're looking at the seat labels and we're finding out the totals for each of those seat labels so we can see that um, in the end our window seats are actually the ones that purchase the most on our flights which is interesting um, they're probably then being a nuisance I guess and standing up and using the bathroom <laughs> disturbing the other people in those seats but they don't care they've got the best seats the window seats in my opinion anyway our final output is looking at the business and economy so this is before we do our excluding business because we want to group by our business and economy field and summing up that purchase amount to see that you know economy are spending much more than the business customers because there are many more business economy customers than business customers on most of the flights so that makes sense the only other thing to mention for this challenge is that we were using an excel output which is in tableau prep builder 2021.1 and in this way you can select your output type to be excel and you can then also specify the worksheet so you can see that i've got those there but before i created that specific worksheet say if i just change this name to be uh you know 2021 20, week 14 oh i'd have to go into the browse so if i want to make a new one um let me do that as point one just for demonstration purposes um, then I don't have any worksheets in this drop down I shouldn't anyway um, <laughs> tell the prick doesn't always like it when you make changes there you go I don't have any worksheets in the drop down because it's a brand new um, file that I'd be writing to so I just have to write that in myself and call it flight time and it comes up with create new worksheet called that um, obviously I didn't actually type the whole thing um, but yeah nice and intuitive to use still um, and good to have another option of how to output our files from tableau prep so hopefully that was useful and thanks very much for watching